nine o'clock. Let's uh, start with a pledge and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Well, let's, uh, let's start off with uh, Priority Carroll. Commissioner Boucher. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Rolstein. I'd like to thank Mr. Keith Vogel with Fleet Management for giving me a tour of the facility this week of the county fleet. We have a tremendous amount of assets. I was unaware of it until I did the tour, and it's a lot to maintain. I'd like to be, uh, show gratitude to all the mechanics out there that work for the county, keeping all the vehicles maintained so they don't cost us more money. Also had a chance to do a tour of the roads with Director Bureau Chief Mr. Jim Cook. Took me around, showed me all the assets we maintain as a county on the roads, the culverts, trimming trees. There's a whole lot to maintain that we don't even recognize that they do behind the scenes. So once again, I'd like to thank all the crew members of the county that are out there keeping our, street, our streets safe, paving them, and uh, maintaining the storm drain system. So thank you very much. Okay. There is a lot that the county does people do not realize, and it's a lot of hidden things. So uh, you're right. I just want to mention uh, Reese Fireman's Carnivals this week. If you uh, get a chance to take uh, your wife or spouse out for uh, dinner, take them out and get a sandwich at the Reese Carnival. Uh, tonight, PM Connections for the uh, Chamber is at Santoni's in Glendon. I know it's across the line, but they do a lot of business in Carroll County, and they belong to the Chamber here, so uh, they have great fried chicken, by the way. That's health food, right? Yeah, that's health food. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, next Tuesday is Walk with the Commissioner at Sandy Mount Park at 7 o'clock. Uh, come on out. Uh, some somebody will show up to uh, walk with you, I'm sure. But um, it should be a good time, and I look forward to uh, inviting all constituents. I don't care where you are to uh, walk around, talk about what's going on in the county. So that's it. Okay, Mr. Fraser. Well, I also did the ride along with the uh, Public Works. See a lot that's going on in the county. It's very. Hey, I, I rode along with her putting on asphalt on the, I can't remember what day it was, it was extremely hot and I'm thinking those guys kind of reminded me of Cool Hand Luke. I don't know if you ever saw the movie when they're behind the truck <laughs> and the classic. Dirt, the tar goes through. It wasn't quite that bad, but still it's extremely hot and the asphalt's here and the guys are the guys are working and they're doing a great job. They really are. They, we, we have a tremendous public works department here. We really do. My hat, hat's off to them. Um, I had my commissioners walked. I can't remember what, anyway, everything. But anyway, a couple of days ago, I had my commissioner's walk. 16th. It was packed. I couldn't hardly fit people in the park. That's <laughs> not, no, it wasn't. There was, <laughs> there was only about half a dozen people or so. But I did hear from a few constituents about what they, you know, their concerns so forth, which is the reason we have these walks, not just to walk the mile around the, the thing, which is good as well. Of course, the person, one of the people that was talking most of the time wasn't in my district. I said, well, call Commissioner Rothstein, but I handled it for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but it was taken care of. And we also went to the opening for, uh, I think it was herb herbatology or her whatever it is, for the, the first dispensary for medical marijuana in Carroll County. It opened up. And when they, it opened up, they had like, uh, I think, 20 clipboards out there with uh, patient signups. Every one of those clipboards was taken and used. They had to bring more out there because the number of people that are going in there, and you heard over and over again, but now I don't have to go to Howard County. Now I don't have to go to Frederick. I don't have to go here. I can get the medication I need right here in Carroll County. So it's a big positive step. That's okay. all I have. A uh, couple quick things. One is, uh, you know, a shout out to our team and also to the Westminster uh, team, uh, the absolute rock stars in uh, dealing with a water main break uh, last night. I got the call. I think it was around 10:30, 11 o'clock from Roberta sharing with me that the emergency center was uh, opened up for the county and we were uh, reaching out to the city uh, if they needed any resource or assets that we could bring to bear to uh, solving the problem. And then uh, they identified the problem, they fixed the problem, the water uh, was returned to normal pressure uh, because of their discipline, diligence and professionalism getting it done, understanding, um, you know, it's, it's all about 
retaining quality of life for our community. So really a shout out to Westminster uh, leadership and, uh, and the folks working it uh, along with uh, the folks on the county team that stood up uh, to support the city. Um, and especially in a time like today, you know, and, and uh, going into the weekend, which brings me to a couple real quick things. One is another shout out, uh, the executive director Karen Baker from the Humane Society, Carroll County Shelter and Animal Control wants to give a shout out to uh, Deputy County Attorney Gail Kessler for the work that she did uh, a couple years ago in dealing with about 11 dogs uh, in dealing with uh, animal cruelty. So it's a nice shout out um, to her. She sent it to uh, the board for us to, to, to see this recognition. Which brings me to the last point and that is we are in a heat wave uh, and it's across the country, especially in the Northeast. So it's one of those things, if you see something, do something about it. If you're feeling like uh, you know you are being affected from the heat, get inside, air conditioning, uh, and staying out of um, this heat is definitely uh, warranted for the next few days. It's gonna be tough, is what uh, I was told. We do have our cooling stations open throughout the weekend. Um, so again, it's neighbor to neighbor looking out for, for each other during this tough time. Uh, but I'm sure we, again, we'll get through it. Uh, so with that, just one, yes, sir. I have to say it is so hot out there. The other day I went for a bike ride. I could only do 32 miles. I had to cut it short, but it's just because the heat, it got me. What are you Go trying ahead. to say? What, what are you he's trying Superman. to say? I'm just saying. I'm not sure hot. what he's saying. <laughs> Okay, let, let's start the morning with Ms. Eisenberg, I believe. Uh, public comment on 2018 planning annual report. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Good morning. Feels good in this room, at least. Yes. <laughs> nice and cool. So this morning I'm here to brief you on our annual planning report for 2018. Um, this briefing will highlight the information found in this report that was sent up to your office. We are required by state law in the land use article of the annotated code to provide this information to the state of Maryland every year. We also do this on behalf of our municipalities as well. So we send one comprehensive document um, to the state. In this document, um, you see subdivision activity, site plans approved water and sewer amendments that have occurred uh, during that calendar year, any changes to comprehensive plans or plan amendments, other development related activities. Um, and again, we also are required to do a mid cycle review of comprehensive plans that are on their fifth year. So comprehensive plans outlined um, in the annotated code are to be updated every 10 years. Um, the midway is where you give a midpoint assessment of implementation and other activities with regards to your planning efforts. So Carroll County had one plan um, adopted or amend amended in 2018, um, and that was the Freedom Community Comprehensive Plan. Um, again, this was required to be updated by the state every 10 years. Uh, the last time we had updated this plan was in 2001, so we were a little behind, but we got it done. <laughs> and this is just a map of the um, Freedom Area that was adopted in 2018. Uh, another thing that we um, report on is residential activity for use and occupancy permits. Um, we do it for that year, which was 2018, and then we show a five-year trend. And this is not only in the county, but again, includes the to totality with the municipalities. So in 2018, 293 use and occupancy permits were issued. Um, in this five-year period, the highest point was 382, and that was in 2015. Um, we also um, report on commercial activity, and last year in 2018, 18 commercial activity uh, permits were issued, with the high being again in 2015 with 31. Um, also during this time frame, uh, in the municipalities, we had 300, um, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize, hold on, I'm getting lost. Um, for residential site plans approved, there were nine in the county, six in the municipalities for a 
15 total site plans approved. That equates to um, 340 lots of 340 units, with the highest being in Warfield with 145 units being um, approved. And then second was Snader Summit in the New Windsor area with 128 lots approved. So that was part of the, um, in, 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 inside the site plans that were approved. For commercial industrial, there were a total of 24 commercial industrial site or subdivision plans approved in 2018. 11 were in the county and 13 were in the municipalities. When you say that site plans yeah. were approved, the build out on those site plans is going to take years, though. It's not, Correct. It's not so this year that there's going to be built. The site plan was approved and they're going to, they, whoever the developer is going to move forward so many lots or whatever per year. Correct. So the site plans approved can be a good indicator of what's coming down in the pipeline um, for the use and occupancy permit. So that's basically when the construction is complete and someone's taking over ownership. And typically in Carroll County, um, one lot equals one unit because we don't do a ton of multifamily in the county. Right. So it's almost a one for one ratio as far as that goes. But the, um, but with that said, building is happening right. and houses are for sale that are included in this from this past year. So like some of the townhomes in Warfield, I did a ribbon cutting or was participating in a ribbon cutting yesterday and the model homes are open. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so some of the homes are completed this, you know, right from the site sorry. plans. Right, now, from those the site are not plans. included right. in the use and occupancy because that's when construction's done. So we'll probably see an uptick because of um, Snader Summit and Warfield. Um, Warfield in the upcoming years, just depending on how long it takes to construct and build out those communities. Right. Okay. Is there any restriction on how long it takes to phase those developments in? Mm -hmm. Is it like three or five years or just unlimited once they get the permit? It depends on what was approved with the site plan. So how, some what's site the plans, longest potentially out of these? I mean, they can at? do um, amendments to the site plan. They can do extensions. So it really does okay. vary depending on the county and, and the municipality and how they're moving through the process. Um, we've had site plans on the books approved for, <laughs> I, I near say almost decades, um, that you know have been approved and just have not been developed. Um, Right. It's so just, just really my ignorance. I just did not know how the system works. So I was right. curious about that. Right. So it, it definitely does vary. Um, and that's something, you know, I can work with Clay Black and Development Review and maybe put together something if that's of interest to the commissioners to brief. Yeah, it'd be interesting to that. see how this uh, unfolds into the future of all mm -hmm. these developments. Right. And again, I'm also, this is uh, with the municipalities as well. So uh, each mm -hmm. municipality has their own way that they. It gets complex. Forward. Right now, Meads Crossing is another big one that's happening mm -hmm. um, that we will see reported um, in this next year for 2019. And I have an in interest in the one up in New Windsor as well. Yes. The Snader Sun. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's Seems a big one. It's very important for the to community. my constituents. Absolutely. That's so really huge for the five. jurisdiction. Somewhere along the line, I think it was four to five years. What was the expectation? From, you know, development through it takes about that long from the time they start till they finish but there's no get started right. but there's no specific timeline associated it's it's I think a, a great point that's being brought up because we do have properties ac across the county where set plans are you know uh, approved and then they end up being vacant and they're vacant for years and then the community says well what are you doing with that area why can't we turn that into a park why can't we do this with that pro well we don't own that property it's owned by someone, but we're, I won't say continuously, mm -hmm. but we, we need to continuously be prepared mm -hmm. to have that conversation <coughs> with the community saying, this is what that property is. And it is approved for residential, commercial. There's nothing there now, but that's not our choice. That's owned property. And just having that conversation because there are, there are some lots that are just out there, you know, and they're vacant. And you're like, what's going on? Why can't we put another ball field there? So on our development so. review website, um, there is information with an interactive map that shows you what plans are approved, what plans are in process, and then it has links to the actual site plan on it as well. So we do have that resource um, online available to the public. So that's yeah. also a good tool. To it, it, it's a great resource. I think uh, the best resource for us is you and the team giving us the cliff notes for our communities and our district, so we're prepared Absolutely. for that. So it was, it was a good point. 
I like the fact that we can direct constituents to that site and mm -hmm. they can review it and, and answer their questions. Yeah. So again, in 2018, um, we are required to um, report uh, inside the priority funding area, outside the priority funding area. That's one of the metrics that the state likes to see, as well um, as within our designated growth areas. Our designated growth area is larger than priority funding, er priority funding areas, so the PFAs are nested um, within those. So the total lots um, in the PFA are uh, 64,525. Those are existing lots. Now, that's all that may not all be developed. So that's everything that's been subdivided, improved and unimproved. Um, and outside um, is, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, uh, 20, inside the priority funding areas is 33,000. Outside the priority funding areas is 31,000. Um, existing lots for a total of 64,525 existing lots in the county. Um, potential lots, these are the lots that are unyet built that we use our buildable land inventory to do basically a, a very high level calculation. It doesn't get into the weeds with perking. Um, it does take into some uh, site constraint, but basically it's, it's pretty much taking the acres of a piece of property the known constraints on it, if it has some preservation on the parcel, um, if it has some steep slopes, um, but it does not take into account some of the finer details of a property, and then dividing it out by what the residential zoning would allow. So if you have 100 acres and there's, um, it allows four units per acre, it would be 400 units, let's just say. It's very much that type of calculation for a buildable land inventory. So typically, we take a reduction off of that of around 30%, and that's essentially what you would get off of any particular parcel. Um, and then we also do this for outside the PFA. So the remaining lots, just as an estimate left in the county based on that type of analysis is 25,565 potential lots. Um, again, those lots for the most part are one for one. One lot equals one unit um, because of the limited uh, multifamily component. So, but that might be, you know, give or take um, how many can be built with multiple units on a particular property. So basically in the county, we have around 90,000 would be our estimated build out um, given the current conditions um, within the county for total residential units. So this would more than double our population in the county, right? If this was um, all used, we're at 60, you know, 60 some thousand units now homes. So we have 60, well, again, that's, that's 64,000. That's just lots. And I don't know if every lot is built out. I don't have that information in front yeah, of me. Yeah, but I mean, roughly 90,000 houses, what you're looking at here, right? At a total build out. Build whatever. out, possible. Right. So that would double the population of the county, right? Not um, quite. We have 60,000, yeah. we have about 60,000 residences in the yeah. county today. Um, and um, so if every one of these were able to be built, that's another 25,000. That, that won't happen, but even with a 30% reduction or whatever yeah. happens, so, it'll still be so, yeah, I don't think the size double. of the county. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Like a 50% increase. Right. right. Yeah. Right. right. Not a not 100% increase, but yeah. a benefit. Yeah. It's, Math. Right. Not a hundred. Yeah. Right. right. Fifty percent right. increase. If every lot was right. built Dual. on. Right. And each lot right. had two persons living right. or right. more right. in that uh, unit. But what this is sharing is that we do have room to grow. Correct. There is continued we development. We have continued. Potential. Well, we we have space. We have room uh, for available lots for growth. That's kind of what this yes. is saying, right? Yeah. Okay. What's really critical is if it's we're true. matching it on top of it say, say it one more time what's Sorry. really critical is that we're matching it we're on top of it because I think a lot of our constituents have the concern about uncontrolled growth and I'm very much impressed with what you're doing and the point no I, I agree and the point that you know that you just said is infrastructure I'm, so I, the lots may be there but is the infrastructure and how is this tied to the infrastructure you know um, because right now this is not, this is just lots, right? Correct, correct. Okay. So the infrastructure would be water and sewer, which is found in our towns and in the freedom and area. Roads. 
um, yes, and roads too. Um, but we also do have constraints outside of areas that do not have water and sewer to a seven lot maximum that can be subdivided. So are these potential lots also take into, they don't take into any of that into no, consideration. So out of that potential lots, it'd be more interesting to know what are the available lots for development, mm -hmm. not just here's a piece of property that fits, Correct. you know, the space, but it actually what is in a place where the infrastructure is there mm -hmm. for build out to occur. And that would actually more or less be in the priority funding area. So I think this priority funding area number, what's the potential inside PFAs, um, is a more realistic okay. uh, categorization of what can happen for the county. And the reason I say that is because priority funding areas, by their very nature, have to be areas that have existing water and sewer. <coughs> um, and then it's then we're not constrained to the seven lot maximum. Um, for subdivision without infrastructure. So this has really shown that there's about 10,000 available lots that could be potential in the, in the entire county, including the municipalities for development. Okay, which is still a very significant number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this map just shows those numbers mm -hmm. spatially. So each dot represents one residential lot. And the state requires that not only do we do the calculations, but we also show it um, on a map as well. And as you can see, the higher concentrations are in those um, municipal boundaries and our designated <coughs> growth areas. Um, and then you can see that our preservation efforts in here, it's very sparse in a lot of the areas where we have a lot of agricultural preservation. Now on a side note, because this map does tell a pretty interesting story is, I imagine this is also nested with other services that, you know, we have within the county, like fire, like schools. And I've seen a map from the schools from 2012. I don't know if it's, one's been done since then, mm -hmm. you know, since the closing of North Carroll and other school changes mm -hmm. on how it overlays to this population map. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's not for you to answer, but it's something for us to be aware of and maybe use this as a, a base mm -hmm. for the services that, you know, we need to ensure we have adequately, you know, provided, you know, provided in, the, in, the, in, the, in the county, right? right. Mm -hmm. Police, right. fire, you know, the social services that we have, the schools that we have, yeah. and then are those districts and all that kind of stuff in sync with what you're sharing with us here, mm -hmm. and then also the projection that we have. So, yeah. okay. I, I tell you, it's scary when you start looking at potentially you could double the size of the county, the services that are needed. That that is a good point. Yeah, I mean, EMS. this is this is critical when we start looking at, you know, you look at the population or double what we have now, just go through Westminster at certain times, you double the population, number of cars, uh, we, we'll have major infrastructure issues and we have to start planning for that. Uh, this just comes, I mean, it, it's too late once you get the housing developments in, you got to uh, go ahead on that uh, in advance. So By years. May, might put your mind at ease that we do have a concurrency management and adequate, adequate public facilities ordinances within the county and the municipalities that would limit the ability to build beyond our means to serve. Um, and that's why any time a project comes through through the development review process, they do concurrency management checks to make sure that there's adequate fire, adequate EMS, that they can meet their times for uh, addressing issues, um, that the school system's not overburdened, or else the, we would work with our sister agencies to look at ways to mitigate or offset those efforts or phase the development, and so it is not problematic. Thanks for sharing that with us, because a lot of our constituents, I don't think, realize what all is going on behind the scenes to keep all this in check. I think it's this unlimited development, and it's quite clear it's not correct well we been, went through that in the 90s with population just going crazy and it, it didn't work the greatest for us as far as the checks and balances we got through it and it's probably good it slowed down so we had time to catch up but 
Um, we did have some just rampant growth, rampant development, well, rampant building of schools, uh, everything growing faster than we could actually keep up with it, and uh, that did slow down. But well, actually, um, that was one of the impetuses mm -hmm. for passing the adequate public facilities ordinance. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the ordinance mm -hmm. has seemed to have a positive effect with regard to that. I mean, the the fact is, it's easy to put dots on a map on what exists today. What's more difficult is to do the trends analysis and the expectations of those dots on the map to ensure that we do have the services right. available right. for, mm -hmm. you know, we're in 2019, but for 2025, 2030, 2035, what other fire departments, what other, um, you know, safety and security uh, services do we need to put in place? What schools uh, and the trends dealing with those? So I, I like. What the, where the, where what you're sharing with us this morning, I just am, I guess now curious, more curious, is how this is used and how it's nested with those services that we're providing today, and then what are the projections for tomorrow, uh, whether it's again five years down the road. Mm -hmm. Schools is a uh, is obviously a hot topic to talk about. Whether it's, you know, we don't want to talk about redistricting, but using most efficient manners, you know, to ensure the school populations are, are right-sized, uh, to ensure that we have the right schools in place um, as we're making, going through decision-making with some of the middle schools. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, you know, um, putting something down in Eldersburg, you know, this is all about projections. It's not about where we are today, but it's about where we're going. So this is very good. I just the hard work is doing the trends analysis and getting everybody in the room saying, yes, this is what we see for our future. There's going to be blips. There's going to be, you know, housing turmoils and all that kind of stuff. And they, they will happen, but it's important for us as leaders here to focus on the trends going forward and how to best service the sure. community. So, Absolutely. Okay. And again, we do this for uh, non-residential development as well. Mm -hmm. So existing, and this is based on um, acreage um, inside and outside of the PFA and potential acreage, and it's based on mm -hmm. our um, what's existing on the ground today, and the potential is based on actual zoning. So we don't take into account units. It's more of a, um, a, a, a site coverage type of ratio. So. Um, inside the priority funding areas, we have about 3,300 acres of existing non-residential development. Um, and outside the PFAs are 1,800 acres for a total of 5,100 acres of the county. Um, uh, now potential, we have a potential of an additional 3,800 acres. Again, this includes the municipalities as well for non-residential development. So this would be our commercial industrial um, development within the county. And then here's a map of the coverage of where uh, this non-residential development could occur. So you can see some concentrations um, in the Mount Airy area, outside of Westminster. Um, Tawny Town has a lot around in their growth area. Some in Union Bridge um, with the Lehigh, uh, Hampstead, um, and uh, the Eldersburg area, um, especially out in the uh, 97 Clean Mill uh, area. Mm -hmm. We also report on agricultural land preservation. Carol, again, is a leader, uh, not only in the state, but in the nation for agricultural land preservation. So in the year of 2018, 1,800 acres were acquired um, to add to our agricultural land numbers. Since 1979, as you all are aware, we've preserved 72,000 plus acres of land, um, even getting us closer to our 100,000 acre goal for agricultural land preservation. Um, in 2018, over $5 million were committed um, through state and local funding uh, for preservation activities. Oops. Oh, and here's the map of that. The brown represents properties that are in permanent uh, preservation as of 2017. The highlighted uh, properties in blue, green, and purple represent um, easements that were acquired in 2018 uh, using three various mechanisms our Carroll County um, Preservation Program, which is very successful, uh, funding from the Maryland Agricultural Land Preservation Foundation, and funding through our Rural Legacy Program, which I don't believe any easements were secured using Rural Legacy funds for 2018, but they were using the County Program and MALF Program. 
Um, so that's all I have for you today. We submitted this document to the state um, on July 1 per um, their requirements, and they just hold on to this. And if they have questions, they get to us. <laughs> um, so that's all I have for you this morning. Any other questions? Do we have um, ways to get this document out to the community? And sure, it's on our website currently. Um, we have it back starting when the state law required us to do this kind of key, uh, tracking um, back to 2011. That's all on our uh, planning website. Um, and we also have hard copies in our office as well for anyone that would like them. Again, we coordinate heavily with the town, so the towns have their copies and are very aware. Um, each town, uh, Planning Commission certified the data that they sent to us um, at their various Planning Commission meetings, and that was really important that they do that for us, so that way we can verify that it's their data. Is this in the libraries that you send it to? Uh, no, we did not send it to the libraries. We're more than happy to if you mm -hmm. would like us to. Yeah, I mean, it's a good place. Uh, libraries, the, the senior centers, having mm -hmm. it available for them where people are, you know, are going. and. Uh, it's of interest, so it can't sure. hurt to have reference materials at both locations. Um, again, the, the key here for me is that it just doesn't sit on the shelf, but it's nested with uh, future plans and how we're projecting the future, you know, the, the services in the future. So good Absolutely. job. Are we potentially going to reach the 75% mark on ag preservation before this year ends? Oh, I can't answer this that. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you mean calendar year or fiscal year? Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Is there an estimate potentially? Where next, we believe in the, by next spring. By next spring. Mm -hmm. well, that's a, a really good that's target a huge to hit. Yes. And that'll be a good chance for us to celebrate all the effort we've done in this county to preserve our Absolutely. agriculture. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Stay cool. You as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, you're up. Request approval for Keystone Computer Aided Dispatch System Annual Agreement. How you doing, sir? Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us this morning. This should hopefully be a, a rather clear-cut administrative request. The uh, annual support agreement for our all things CAD, Computer Aided Dispatch, with Keystone Public Safety Inc. being the vendor that provides that. It is now due for renewal. There is nothing new included. This is to maintain what we currently have. That's all of the uh, uh, in, ap operations applications in Mr. Brown's shop. And I do apologize uh, for those. This is Mr. Jack Brown, the emergency communications manager for the county. In essence, the gentleman that makes sure our number one center runs extremely well the way it does. Um, and it also includes all of the field mobile applications, you know, the mobile data terminals that all the police cars and medic units and fire engines have in it, et cetera, and the interfaces. So I'm here today simply to ask for your authority to execute that agreement because of the dollar value, 171,355 exceeds my uh, uh, mm -hmm. authority to proceed on my own. So I respectfully request your permission to execute this agreement again this year. Just before we go there, how's the system working? I believe extremely well, but no issues. Around. It's very beneficial to the to the users in the field. Between everybody, all the agencies, it's working very well, and it's what it is expected to do. I believe so. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Without a move, the Board of County Commissioners authorized the Director of Public Safety to execute the proposed FY 2020 agreement with Keystone Public Safety and approve the payment of the bill. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, thanks. Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah, that was easy. easy. Yes, That's sir. That's right. Thank you. Okay, now go away. <laughs> I, would, I was oh. going to comment. I've been here several times. Yes, thank you, sir. I've been here several times recently, and it, it seems like more often than not, uh, one of your colleagues, so he must check the agenda and know when I'm appearing. That's yeah. right. He's <laughs> avoiding you there. It's personal. <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. exactly. Campbell, thanks Take for your personal. service. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Request approval, submit grant application, accept grant award, 2021 Jurisdictional Family Services Grant. Who was coming up? Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Thank you. This is an annual thing since uh, for the last 21 years where we get a jurisdictional grant for family law administration. 
and we have to apply quite in advance. So this is the FY21 application, as you can see. The only significant change that I want to draw to your attention on this is that we're asked for a part-time new position of a custody evaluator. Um, we are going to have the administrative office of the courts coming next week for a site visit to just see how we're doing and to see what our needs are and everything. And when I had the discussion with the head of that department, it was clear that our major problem right now for family services is the lack of a custody evaluator who would be on staff and be able to do custody evaluations without charges to the litigants. We used to have one on staff and she left and they changed the qualifications for a custody evaluator and we went to doing contract evaluators because it has to be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a licensed clinical social worker or a licensed family therapist and we didn't have the funds to have a staff person. So now we charge the litigants money for these evaluations and it's dropped from about 50 a year to uh, six a year. And that's because the people simply cannot afford it, yet it's a service that's really required by the courts. So I am putting back in, kind of at the request of the Administrative Office of the Courts, a part-time um, evaluator and see if we can get it back into the system again and useful to the courts. So that's the major change in the request from previous years. Are there any questions? The, um the total grant is $683,000? The total grant that I'm requesting, yes, is um, 642. 642. It's just, and our match is 41000 Yes, ha that is the fringe for my position. I'm still grandfathered in under the old Got system. It. Okay, so that that's. That is a very good return. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the only one left in the office under the old system. Everyone else has their fringe paid for under the grant. Got it. Okay. Okay. So assuming your county contribution is already in the budget? Yes. It's nothing additional? Absolutely, yes. I assumed it was, but yes. I have to ask that question. <laughs> yes, it was anticipated, so yes, thank you. Can I make the motion that the Board of Commissioners approves the submission of the application the FY2021 Jurisdictional Family Services Grant and accept the award? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, thank you. Okay, I'd really like to thank um, the assistance I get from the grants office. Mr. Coda is just amazing, helpful, and so is Ms. Godwin, who's not here. Mm -hmm. But between the two of them, they have caught my errors because they have very sharp eyes. And I just <laughs> want to say how proud I am because other I talk to my counterparts across the state, yeah. and they don't seem to get the competent assistance that we get here in Carroll County for our grants. So I really want to say that. It really makes it possible to do this and to be accurate. Well, thank and you for I recognizing really really our hard work. I really appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. One team, one fight. Yeah. Carroll County has such a great team. And yes. They do. Yes. Wonderful yes. working with the, with the court system. Really. Yeah. And they're always cheerful about it, even <laughs> when I'm making terrible mistakes. It's very nice. <laughs> See Karen smile. It's always. Yeah. She, and she always, always has a smile on her face. So I've does. never seen her frown. So. <laughs> I think okay. I've come close to giving her some crowns, but she, <laughs> she stuck through it. And Thank you me. get to stay up here. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So next we is uh, request approval to submit grant application accept grant award 2020 child support circuit court magistrate's office. Who? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning again, commissioners. Uh, we're here. Uh, before you today, I'm, I'm, I'm with uh, Magistrate Poole to present the uh, fiscal year 2020 Child Support Enforcement Administration's Cooperative Re Re Reimbursement Agreement and to ask you to um, accept the award. The agreement will fund um, a portion of the salaries and benefits dedicated to child support efforts for the program um, assistant, who is also the judicial assistant, two bailiffs. Uh, and circuit court operating expenses. So if you have any specific questions about the program, Master Pool, we'll be happy to answer those. Could you read off the budgetary numbers so our viewers know what figures we're looking at here? Sure, so the maximum amount to be paid by um, DHS slash HHS, because this is federal, pass through state, 
um, funding that we, re we received is $27,979. Our county cash contribution is $13,177. County indirect costs are $3,810 for a total program cost of $44,966. Thank you. What are the county indirect costs? Yeah. So indirect costs, Commissioner, are kind of share shared costs across an organization. So they, those would be things like um, HR, accounting, okay. and federal grants allow us to kind of recapture those costs. Sometimes it doesn't make sense for us to put them in the grant, but in this case it does. Um, and it, we also use it for part of our match. We also right. have to put some cash on there, but it's, it's part of our match. So that cash match would actually be higher if we didn't recapture those indirect costs. Okay. This has been, uh, this is a, um, Continued grant has been in place. Yes, sir. I, I'm not sure how many years we've received it, but it's it's been many many years. Has it been the same flat cost? You, no, it generally sure. is. I think um, there was a time before the magistrates became part of the system that the magistrate costs were considered in there. Okay. Can I make the motion the Board of Commissioners approve the submission of the FY 2020 CSEA Cooperative Reimbursement Agreement and acceptance of the award? Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to second what Ms. Weller said. <laughs> <laughs> There's a common theme going. You get to say that too. Can I have a raise now? <laughs> I was going to suggest you take her out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great too. Um, thank we, you so we much. Are, it, it's the same. <laughs> I, I agree with Ms. Welliver. Everywhere I go, people tell me they don't have the near the cooperation that we have. So we're very fortunate. Fantastic. And her face is getting redder and redder each time. So this is good. <laughs> Matching her shirt. That's right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. Who is going to give you more kudos? Um, okay. Next, request approval, submit grant application, accept a Grant Award, 2020 Child Support, Carroll County Sheriff's Office. Vicki, you have to get a Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to start sure. the same thing? Sure. So in the same vein as, as, as the um, presentation that you just saw today, I'm here with Vicki McDonald, um, Director at the Sheriff's Office, and we are here to present the um, same agreement, only this time for the Sheriff's Office. The agreement funds the salaries and benefits of one full-time Sheriff's Deputy and one 30-hour um, per week administrative position, as well as office supplies, training equipment, indirect costs, and other operating expenses. So again, if you have any specific questions, Vicki would be happy to address those. Our contribution is significantly higher yeah. than the other grants. Yes, Commissioner. So the, the program itself is bigger than than the um, than the the one for the circuit court. And, and in this particular agreement, we're asking for a vehicle um, this year, which I think is around fifty three thousand um, dollars. So there are just more costs to this program. But our match is about you know fifty five sixty percent compared to the other matches, which were very minimal. Is that normal or? Well, so in this particular case, so it's around a six, so the um, uh, DHS will um, fund around 66%, 66 and two thirds of the grant, and then we need to match that with a, our, our take in that is around 33 and, and one third. So how, whatever the formula is that they use is how um, they, they come up with what we owe in the match. So the program is funding a complete position for a deputy which is salary and portions of the fringe right. and other equipment and expenses to basically function and an administrative person. So the entire project covers one and three quarters positions, so to speak. So it's a, a different makeup than the piece that you just saw. And it's a coordinated effort between the offices in order to manage all of this. So yeah. this is, I guess, the enforcement piece, like they assist uh, as it, as it mentions in here, um, serving warrants and things like that, but it's all in partnership. Just a question. It says you have to locate absent parents uh, here so they um, get child support. How far do you go to locate absent parents? Well, within the county, and then if there's anything outside of the county, paperwork is, is distributed just like any other 
um, warrant anything like that outside of the county. Okay. Mm -hmm. This position is um, in partnership with DSS. Is it housed over at DSS, this position itself? No, they're probably back and forth all the time, but the deputy works out of our office and the staff um, because of the systems that they need to access. But they're in partnership all the time. They're back and forth between the offices. Um, if the funding goes away for this that we're asking for, let's say it doesn't come in next year, does this position go away as well? Most likely. This has been, this has also been around for I don't know how many years okay. um, it, it's been in place. It's one of the. So we're expecting state. it to continue year after year. Absolutely. And okay. we've never heard of anything different that right. it would change. Hmm. Okay. Any other conversation? I hear a motion. Make a motion, the Board of Commissioners approve the submission of the FY 2020 trial, Child Support Enforcement Administration's Cooperative Reimbursement Agreement and acceptance of the award. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll third, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go. <laughs> 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 if you bring like lunch. now's the right time to ask for a raise, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is your day. <laughs> I appreciate all those comments. Certainly go play the lottery. <laughs> so the next two are second uh, public hearings on block grants. If there's anybody in the public, which I don't believe there is, for any comments, public comments? Nope. So with that said, let's, where am I? Second public hearing for the FY 2018 Community Development Block Grant funding under special projects <coughs> category for change. Is that the one we're doing right now? Yeah. Yeah. For change Thanks. to conduct strategic program services space planning. So, Got it. Good morning. How are you doing? Always prepared. Good morning, Mr. Schreiber. Good morning. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You get the commissioner last, so we might come after you. Yeah. Morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. On March 1st, 2018, we received your approval to submit the community development block grant on behalf of Change. March 1st, 2018. Excuse me, um, for their strategic program services space planning project. Um, the full $25,000 was awarded, and we are required to hold a, a second public hearing um, as a grant requirement. February 15th, 2018, the first public hearing was held. And today, um, we're seeking approval to close the public hearing and leave the record open for 10 days. And I believe, I think Mike has a comment. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, um, I'm actually going to speak on behalf, both, uh, on behalf of both the grants that we're, I think, closing out today. Um, but um, the first thing I want to do is on behalf of the individuals and the, the families, members of our team, and the board of directors of Change, a division of Penmar organization, we want to thank the, the county commissioners, as well as DHCD, for their continued support through the community development block grant um, process of our, our projects that continue to enhance the, the supports that we're able to provide individuals in Carroll County. Um, the, uh, this, these grant projects also continue to demonstrate the outstanding collaboration uh, between the nonprofit community within Carroll County and the uh, Carroll County departments. Um, the, we're, we're incredibly grateful, and this is, this is a continual theme um, that already started, um, <laughs> but we as one organization continue to just be so grateful um, for the grants uh, administration team within the county. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, um, it, it is an anomaly. Uh, it, this doesn't exist in other counties as far as we are aware. And we're the benefactors of that uh, under your leadership and we greatly appreciate Karen and Debbie and the entire team. Citizen Services as a team is continually supportive of what we do as nonprofits within Carroll County, not just change, but all of the nonprofits. And again, it's, it's a bit different than what other organizations, my colleagues across the state experience. So 
we just want to give a shout out uh, for that team and uh, the, the support. Um, the last piece of recognition that I think is very important to share, and this is specific to the second project that we'll, we'll talk about, and that is the replacement of our roof mm -hmm. uh, at Change. Um, during that project, um, the Department of Public Works uh, came to our assistance in a very big way. Uh, I've got to give tremendous uh, accolades to Jeff Castingway as well as Scott Mosier on that team. Um, as you know, on a roof that size, we've got, uh, we've got stone ballast that has to be removed. And um, we were in a bit of a challenge as far as, okay, so what do you do with that much stone? Um, and I got a hold of, of Scott, and before we know it, Depart the, the Department of Public Works um, not only took care of helping to collect the stone, but also remove the stone uh, and sent it over to the uh, recycling uh, operation, and, and it's being reclaimed. And it saved, it saved us uh, well over $12,000 in expense. And again, just a demonstration of just how beneficial the departments are. And I've said this before, of the collaboration that we have. It's not just what happens here in terms of your support financially, but the collaboration across many of the, uh, the county departments. And I think it's, it's incumbent upon us as organizations to make sure that, that you know that. And I know you know that, but we, we can't be, we can't miss an opportunity to thank them. Just say that slower so the newspaper can catch up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyhow, so I, again, on behalf of, of everyone that we support at Change, thank you very much for your support. So. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on, uh, on this block grant? On this particular one, okay. not from us, no. Okay. So I'll make a motion that the Board of Commissioners close the public hearing and leave the record open, open for 10 days. Second. Okay, and further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, and also for the roof replacement project? Correct, so on June 14th, 2018, we received approval, your approval to submit the Community Development Block Grant for the roof replacement at change. An application in the amount of $90,000 was approved and awarded in full. May 31st, 2018 was the first public hearing. This project has also been complete and we're here today to seek approval to close the public hearing and leave the record open for 10 days. Mike, do you have any comments? Any other comments the Mike? only comment I have is it doesn't leak. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That's a good, good step. <laughs> Can I make a motion the Board of Commissioners close the public hearing and leave the record open for 10 days? Check. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, I get to, you get to go away, don't yeah, you? Yeah, finally. Yeah. Okay. I, I, do, <laughs> I do think that Karen needs a raise. <laughs> yeah, <Karen. laughs> okay, Karen. You do a great job. That's oh, not thank, you so <laughs> thank you so much. Even though I you're a Steelers fan. This is for Mr. Zaleski. You oh. know, it's because yes, I know he's a fan, you too. Don't you, you don't need to do that. There's absolutely no reason. He's not going to give me the raise. <laughs> well, that is true. Karen, 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 come up here for a second. Come, come on. Yep. And you're not in trouble. Yeah, preach it to it. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you're challenged to keep up with this level. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Well, well, I've learned that managing grants is quite complicated, and you do a wonderful job, so thank you. Thank you bring a lot of money and resources into this county mm -hmm. to help with a lot of different organizations, especially with those who have disabilities. So thank you sincerely. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I would like to say, though, that I, I, oh gosh, I have, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to say the least amount as possible here. Um, I have really owe everything to my, my manager, Debbie Staniford. She's been fantastic and a real mentor to me. And I don't know why I'm getting so choked yeah, up, but yeah. I just can't thank hey, her enough. Yeah, it's so, it's one team, reason. one fight, and we're doing a lot of things. So thank you so much. Yes, thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Please let me go thank now. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All okay. Right. And finally, Senior Assisted Living Group Home Subsidy Grant Application Award Acceptance. Can we do it with that? Yeah. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the other half. Hmm? The other half. 
It's the other half of the awesome grants department. <laughs> Debbie Sanford for joining me. Um, this morning we're seeking approval to, to submit and accept the FY20 Senior Assisted Living Group Home Subsidy. Um, the Senior Assisted Living Group Home Subsidy Program is a state program that provides subsidies to low-income older adults to assist with the cost of services provided in assisted living facilities. Um, each year, approximately 10 to 15 lower-income adults 62 years and older have been served through this program. The total amount of the grant award is $148,709, uh, $14,871 is goes towards our program coordinator, $133,838 goes towards client subsidies for the total of $148,709. And Gina, right on time, <laughs> um, for a little bit of schedule, is <laughs> going to give you a little bit more information about the program. <laughs> Take your time. I'm yeah. so sorry. Good morning, Ms. Gina. Having a time. Good morning. <laughs> um, so the um, Senior Assisted Living Group Home Subsidy Program, call it subsidy for short, um, it does provide um, a subsidy up to um, $650 a month um, towards the cost of an assisted living facility to help people um, to be able to afford an assisted living facility. Um, so we do have um, currently, excuse me, I'm catching my breath, um, 11 people in the program. Um, the allocation will um, enable us to serve up to 17 people in the program so we do have openings um, and so we continue to market sorry so we can fill those openings um, but it's the um, only program that we have that um, is not Medicaid funded um, that helps people to pay for an assisted living facility one of the challenges and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong um, one of the challenges with this program is the amount of the subsidy doesn't typically cover assisted living um, typically isn't enough for someone who is going yeah. into assisted living even though it's a nice subsidy the cost of assisted livings are so high that sometimes individuals can't take advantage of it because it's still not enough yeah and so to that, cover their costs the um the 650 dollars amount is the max um and it's a very antiquated number if you will that has been the cap for a very long time um it's written into legislation so that's the problem with trying to get that increased and how, so how long is long um I've been with the agency for almost 13 years, and it's been that cap since I've been there. So would this be a conversation you would recommend having with the delegation? Yes. Um, yes. And putting, um, possibly putting on an agenda for looking at how to raise that ceiling of 650 is because it is that uh, antiquated? Uh, it's, it's a state. Um, it is state funding. So Maryland Department of Aging is currently okay. um, working. They're drafting documents to present. Um, during the next, next yeah. legislative session to try to increase that amount. Okay, so understanding the problem and mm -hmm. the, uh, the concern, <clears throat> you know, as you know, we are meeting with the delegation in late August, and this would be a great agenda item, mm -hmm. I think, uh, for, you know, you got to do your homework on what does right look like from 650 mm -hmm. that's been there for... It's 148. 648. Oh. In the wrong page. Hmm? I'm sorry? Right, so it's 148,000? For the total allocation. No, no, that, that, that's, for, that's for the grant. I'm talking about the 650 oh, okay. um, cap. You know, cap, cap on cap. an individual. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. Gotcha. It's, it's, so 650 cap per person. Yes. If it's 15 years gotcha. old, I can understand rent could have been 650 mm -hmm. bucks, but mm -hmm. now it ain't. So <laughs> now we have to right. look at the It does have an inflationary index, so to speak. And it hasn't changed. Yes. So, right. But if it's... Uh, tied to the state this will be a, I think uh, a good topic uh, for you guys to apologize for the team to take a look at mm -hmm. and, uh, and and make recommendations okay yeah and we have we have people that um, would qualify um, you know medically okay. for the program they demonstrate they need assisted living care but just the subsidy with what they yep. can afford then is still not enough. understood and it makes it difficult for us to fill our slots as well mm -hmm. and so we, you right now we have 11 we have 11. We did have 13 who came off of the program recently. So yes, we can okay. definitely did, add more people. I'm sorry, why did it come off? Um, one person came off because um, during her research, she was over um, the um, the assets or the, the monthly income. No, the assets, she was over the assets, so we had to take her off the program. Um, and the other person um, passed away. Okay. Do we have any veterans involved in this program that we're servicing? We do, we do. We have um, we have two people in the program right now that um, they do qualify for veterans benefits. 
um, that help to pay. So with their income plus the veterans benefits plus our subsidy, they're able to afford the Thank assisted you. living facility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions? I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the Senior Assisted Living Group Home Subsidy Grant Submission and Acceptance of the Award. Okay. okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much, Thank ladies. You. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Apologize. Catch your you brush, don't Jane. apologize. <laughs> you got exercise running up here. <laughs> okay, let's get through a handful of public works decisions. And the first is requesting approval for use of term contract for pipe video inspection services. Mr. Jeff, come on up. <clears throat> Good morning. 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 Just want to roll? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, Still catching my breath. So we're here today to um, discuss and propose to you the use of Strohacker Incorporated to do our storm drain video inspections for roads that we are planning on for next year's um, capital program. And we have uh, 14,567 linear feet total at the cost of $82,298.59. It's a term contract that we have with them that we um, received this proposal on. This is for video inspection? Yes. And it costs, and that's my mind's not wrapped around this right, more than $1,000 a foot for video inspection? It's $4.92 per linear foot. Okay. At 14,000 feet at $82,000. Well, there's yeah. other items like mobilization, maintenance of traffic. You Clean. know, sometimes they're setting up next to the road and they have to have flagging operations there. Cleaning of the pipe. That's they have to come in with a jet truck and they have to clean the pipe before we can camera it. Okay. So we have we know what the so we can get a full idea what the condition it is. So it's kind oh. of all inclusive Just, services, okay. video. They process all the videos, get it in all ready so we can put it in our GIS system. Um, along with evaluation, you know, with all the criteria okay. for evaluating that information. Have you used them before, Striker? Yes, we have. Past couple of years. And you're confident in the work they do? Yes. How competitive of, of a bid is this? Um, we, since it was a term contract, we just um, asked them for a price on this particular one. Don't we own a camera? It, what we have in utilities is a small push camera that we that only goes into a a, a, um, a flat pipe, kind of like a sewer or like a sewer pipe where we're doing like a sewer house connection. But corrugated pipes and larger you know larger uh, storm pipes that's when you need larger buggy systems to do this. And we don't have the length either. What we have is a push yeah. camera that only goes about 40 50 feet. Now is this something like down in Sykesville? The, the piping is this a tool that would be used for looking at that pipe on going into Main Street? The one I'm talking about that utility zones. Uh -huh. That's what. They, no, not that utility. Well, this one itself. Using this contractor, yeah. yes. This is this this is exactly what this type this contractor or one similar is what the state highway used to look at the storm pipes. Okay. And they can go hundreds of feet or if right. not thousands of feet. Right. Um, with their with their system remotely and perform the evaluations the work we do with this do we go into the municipalities and do the work within our eight towns yeah. no. no this no, is no, only for what county, the county roads maintains okay yep no i'm just curious what was a camera like that cost you have any idea uh we looked at that and the camera that's comparable to what strohacker uses is probably like ten thousand dollars but then there are going to be, because it has a software part to it, you're going to have software licensing costs, maintenance costs, updates, a technician or somebody yeah, to be personnel. able to use it. Um, you know, so it, it can add up to a lot. I mean, I don't have a firm number, but we did check on the 
price of the equipment yeah, it's just going in. And we have people on site, too, when they're doing this, correct? It's two to, yes. yeah. yeah, it's a crew of two to four people, plus they have to come in and jet all the lines with their equipment. You know, they usually have everything so as a whole trailer system. The, 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 the contractor has those people on site, yeah. not the county. We don't have anyone on site when they're doing this? No, we, um, we do have people that go out and make yeah. sure they're at the right location. Yeah, mainly so and that they're they're not there the whole time but they do go out yeah, and right. you know visit them and check to make sure that they're doing what we ask them to do it's just, yeah. just the price seems awful high per foot to me i just it's, it's only, astronomical but no it, it's uh only four four bucks for and change a foot four times 14 is fifty four thousand. Right. So fifty four thousand out of that eighty two thousand. Okay. And then right. the extra right. okay. twenty some odd thousand is for flagging and other Right, okay. Okay. Right. okay. So yeah, um I, I just wonder would it be cheaper to have you know yeah. training staff person or running camera and just do it as a I mean you'd be talking to crew that you'd have to have a crew, the equipment, the training, the software. And this is not a full time operation. This is something we only do you know we They'll come in and take care of this work within, I think it's what, about a month? Within yeah, a month or? it'll be longer than that. Okay. Yeah. Um, you do the evaluation, they turn the data into us, then we we put them in our asset management system, evaluate what we need to do for the work coming up for the next season. But at that point, they're not out there any longer. You know, sometimes in many cases like this, uh, as you're recommending, it is better to outsource a service um, than do it in-house. However, with that said, and, and some of the questions that you're hearing is, has the analysis been done? Doing a comparative analysis, what, what if we did own it, the value added, and the return on that investment of owning this type of, you know, product and service, mm -hmm. compared to outsourcing it? Um, I understand you've done some of the work, and but we're talking kind of anecdotally. Um, if, if we can actually see something like that, it would also help us saying here are the you know 10 services that need to be outsourced because return on investment if we owned them it would be just too astronomical or too you know too too much labor or whatever it may be right because um, it's really it's going to be the all-inclusive cost for three or four mm -hmm. staff full-time staff in order to be right running and operating this equipment um, you know and that's right. where a lot of the cost will will be coming up you know, and, and mm -hmm. that staff typically may not be the same staff. That's your labor staff to, to be performing the work. They're not typically the people are going to be doing sitting in the office doing now the evaluations, right. evaluation of you know watching the you know. No, I, 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 I understand. I, it's just actually doing the the work on here are the things that we are outsourcing, and from our experiences over years, here are the three or four more things next year that we should be looking at outsourcing as opposed to doing it in, internally uh, so we can use our folks for other, you know, other uh, activities, right. you know. And we continue to still try to fill up vacant positions now. So. We can, we can de right. definitely do yeah. that. We can uh, identify we can the things yeah. that, um, that, that we outsource and, right. and ensure that we are making the best decision yes. with regard to Right, that. And, and this I mean, is, you know, you, it's a target of opportunity talking with you right now. Right. But this is across the county. Is what are the activities that we outsource? Are we getting a return on investment on outsourcing them? Should we be doing them internally to again be guarded with the money that we we allocate and the resource we allocate uh, to include people and and uh, money? I guess part of that equation would be: Is this a reoccurring annual expense? I don't know. Since this is my first year, mm -hmm. we do this every year, or is it like every yes. three years? So it's an annual expense. Right. Yeah. This is for the rehab projects we're doing right. next year. Right. All right. So that's part that mm -hmm. needs to be considered too, mm -hmm. since it's a reoccurring annual expense and right. the factoring in that evaluation. Right. I thought this and, might be like right. every two years, every three years, but that changes it. And then oh, oh. we'll branch out to to get you know ultimately we should have uh, a look at all of the pipes and the current condition that they're in that helps you make better decisions on other projects that you're doing you know what we don't want to do here is 
paver road and not knowing what the pipe condition right. is and then having a failure that we have to come back and right. patch the road or yeah. make repairs. Commissioner Rothstein is making a very good point. If you all could evaluate this and come back with some really strong numbers to justify us doing this in-house and prove that we would save money over the course of time, I think we would seriously consider supporting you in that, that expense. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll look at, I think what yeah. we're asking for is looking at all these kinds of things. We'll, we'll definitely Absolutely. Yeah, we'll and, and again, it's, 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 it's an opportunity to talk and share this with you right now, but yep. this is across the staff yep. and across the county yep. is, again, what are the things we are outsourcing? Are we making the best decision outsourcing those services and products? Should it be internally? And going through that, uh, again, how we're taking care of our resources mm -hmm. um, and best using our resources. Right. So, but with that said, you know, I have a lot of confidence in the work that you've already done in getting to where we are, you know, uh, and moving forward. Uh, we just want to add so. more headaches and responsibilities <laughs> to the department. Hey, you give us the so. money for the equipment and the personnel, we'll load up. Uh, well, mm -hmm. we don't want to ex expand county government either, so yeah, that's, that's right. the other side of it. But if we can save money on the long run, I yep. think that's right. a real good fact yeah. to right. consider. Okay. It's worth We always take that in consideration. Yeah. Anything yeah. that we do, we take that in consideration. Is there a way Thank that we you. can stretch that dollar? Okay. With all that said, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners <laughs> approved using the term contract for storm drain pipe video inspections in the amount of $82,289.59. Second. Okay. We have a second. Any further discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to talk about approval of change order number three. What is this? Approval of change order request for project closeout with C.J. Miller, right? Is that where right. we're at? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is one of last year's project, and we didn't complete it last year because the weather was just um, such an impact on the work that um, you know slowed us down and we finished it up this spring um, but we did run into some situations where we needed to make repairs similar to what I just talked about mm -hmm. with the pipes you know like there were additional areas than what we had estimated that needed to be patched so we spent some additional funds making sure that they were properly patched before we overlay them sure. Um, and these are just the major items that were more than what we had estimated. The um, price adjustment for asphalt binder is something that we look at because, you know, we all see when we go to fill our cars up how the price fluctuates. So there's a formula-based um, decision that we make on whether or not the contractor should be uh, basically paid for the change in, in the fuel uh, in the um, asphalt binder cost um, there were a couple of roads that because of all the rain after we reclaimed them they just were wet and you can't build a new road on top of a wet subgrade soil cement is something that helps stabilize that and dry it up so we made the decision to go ahead and do that so it wasn't um, you know inconvenient for the citizens out there traveling on those roads and then there were some areas where we, it was just again late in the year grass didn't grow over the winter seed didn't make it through the winter so you know we had to come back and, and reseed and um, put some topsoil down there so overall this request is for two hundred fifty five thousand uh, dollars two hundred fifty five thousand forty six dollars and eighty seven cents there is funding available in the um, account for this um, additional work. What is account 8719? It was the um, 19 pavement management. 18, so, sorry. Eight, 18, sorry. So I'm it's thinking left 19 because we're okay, out Okay, left over money from <laughs> the previous account for paving that yes. we put into this account. Do we know how much is in that account? You said it's, it's remaining. available. Remaining. Heidi, would you happen to have that? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I don't. No, no, it's all good. I'm done. We're bringing the pros. Mm -hmm. uh, the current balance in my account is about $574,000. After this change order, it will still be about $319,000 remaining in this project. Okay. 
it's early in the uh, fiscal year. No, no, it's okay. It's early in the fiscal year, and we're already going into that account, taking about a third of it away. You know. Yeah, this, is this is closing out the, the the projects that we ended yeah. in by Ju yeah. in June. Yeah, they're basically last year's projects, and most of them have been closed. Right. This one was not, and we have one other uh, subdivision project that we're working on that, that we'll close that one out, um, you know, when the work is complete. But that one seems to be on track. We're, we're you know, pretty much keeping to the quantities that we had estimated. This will close out. There will not be a change for Correct. dollar amount to this. Correct. <clears throat> Last year was a rough year. Yes. yes. To do things, anything, you did it twice. Sometimes three times. Right. Yeah, you built a swale today, and tomorrow is gone, and rebuild it again, and <laughs> yeah. a week later, another rainstorm. Yeah. You know, With that, I move the Board of Commissioners approve the change order request in the amount of $255,046.87. Second. Okay, and further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And now we're going to 2019 pipe culvert and storm drain rehab. Correct. Sorry, I thought Jeff was going to get a seat up for me. <laughs> oh, you want the bill? Sorry. Right. Okay. I didn't know this was here. I didn't see the name on it. Yeah. So we are uh, here to request your approval to award the contract for the 2019 pipe culvert rehabilitation projects, the Pleasance construction, the amount of $346,577.90. Um, we went out to bid for this, received four bids, and Pleasance was the lowest. Why were they so dramatically different from 346 up to 635? I mean, that's. Any when we look at the bid tabulation, Pleasance was low on many, many items. Uh, they do very good work, but I think they really wanted this project. So their services price point was much lower than anything else. Yeah, yes. they're doing a lot of work there currently in the county for the Bureau of Utilities and doing a great job. So. They have for years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're just very aggressive with Carroll County with the business. And this is budgeted? Yes. Wow. Can I make okay. a motion to the Board of Commissioners to award the contract for 2019 Pike Culvert and Storm Drain Rehabil Rehabilitation to Pleasance Construction Incorporated in the amount of $346,577.90? Second. Okay, any other discussion? Further discussion? Hear none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Now let's go into stream channel improvements to deep run. Do you mind if I just add one, one thing to you that? You can add as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> just, so the first item we had as far as doing the inspections, when we got the inspections that they did last year, we made the decision on these per particular projects to include in, in the bid. So that's how they kind of all relate mm -hmm. in, in doing the analysis first and then right. following through and doing the work. Okay. Thanks. Sure. And I'm done. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Thanks. Butler, before you leave, I want to thank you for giving me a tour of your oh, department last week or the week before when I yeah. take you out on site and show me exactly what you guys are providing for the county. Any I was comments? very much impressed and thank you very much. We can take you out on a big bridge if you want to see how they do bridge inspections. Just don't push me off. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. We'll We'll tape it down to it. Hi. <laughs> but the point that was made, measure twice, cut once. And right. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. I appreciate the analysis done. So, okay, stream channel improvement to deep run. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. So we are here to request your approval for the um, stream channel improvements to deep run. Uh, we'd like to award to C.J. Miller in the amount of $56,920. Um, so for this particular job, we reached out to our term contractors or sweet bids, and we got two bids back, and C.J. Miller was the lowest. And they're equipped to do the job, and you have no, no issues with them. Not at all. Not at all. Obvious. I do have some some background information if you would like to. Please. More, more, sure. more information. This is part of the overall Hampstead uh, uh, treatment plan improvement project. Uh, that includes the DNR upgrade as well as a discharge of the treated effluent to to both Piney Run and Deep Run. This project is required as part of by MD as, as part of the Deep Run uh, uh, discharge permit. The scope of work establishes approximately 100 feet of the natural channel behind the Black and Decker facility. Um, as part of the original Black and Decker per 
permit, they were allowed to, to divert flow from deep run in, uh, uh, towards a pond on their private property, mixed with the effluent, treated on site, and then re redischarged back, in, back into deep run. So what this project does is it, is it reestablishes the natural channel flow through, through the deep run uh, stream channel itself. And it, it, it does include the, 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 it includes the removal of a concrete flume, an inlet splitter box, uh, two storm drain segments, and a reinstatement of, of the natural channel flow. And Black and Decker does not have any other responsibility to any of the, the work? They do not. You mentioned Piney Run. Say it one more time. This yeah, feeds into Piney this Run? This is not the Piney Run that's in the south part of Carroll. It's the okay. Piney Run that feeds into Baltimore County. Got it. Yeah. It's on the immediate, it, it, it runs through Carroll for several hundred feet of the Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay. Any other conversation, discussion? Can I hear a motion? I move the Board of Commissioners <laughs> award the contract for the stream channel improvements to Deep Run to C.J. Miller on the amount of $56,920. Second. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Now let's talk about replacing generators for Pleasant Valley Wastewater Treatment Plant. Yeah, we'd now like to request your approval to award the contract for the purchase and installation of a replacement generator and automatic transfer switch for the Pleasant Valley Wastewater Treatment Plant to a Universal Utilities in the amount of $58,600. Again, we requested bids. We received four bids and Universal Utilities. Well, not quite the lowest was the lowest considering the um, generator they were providing. Did you request a specific type of generator? Because I see all different uh, KWs on there. Well, what we did, uh, Commissioner Fraser, is the is is the current generator at, at the facility is a 200 kilowatt uh, size generator. Two of the bidders did submit sizes that were less than 200. They felt strongly that that, that these size generators would supply power sufficient to operate the plant. We feel as though the the uh, best option is a 200 right. uh, okay. uh, uh, gen uh, uh, Generac uh, uh, brand name. Could they have, just curious, those that went below, I mean, not they, meeting they, the requirement, could they have submitted a they, 200 kW or they didn't have it or? Yes, they could have. Okay. Um, and they would have been well over the they, yeah, absolutely. price anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. So. And if you'd like some background information about the existing generator Please. and plant, uh, the, the, the existing generator dates back to 1987, believe it or not, and it was, it, it was installed at this site as part of the 1997 upgrades. So it has 32 years of service life, approximately 3,500 hours of, of, of uh, use on it, which is quite high as far as the generator uh, uh, sector goes. Uh, the generator cannot be repaired. Uh, parts are, are simply not available anymore. The rebuild cost would be approximately $45,000 or three quarters the cost of a brand new generator, so that's almost a no-brainer. This generator, this generator is among the oldest of our fleet of 29 units, and it, it was on our short list for, for upgrade anyways. And as per uh, my, my, my previous times before the board, uh, generators are a very critical part of the wastewater treatment uh, uh, operation. If we don't have a backup power supply on hand, we might, we, we will, will very likely be uh, 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 sending raw sewage into the adjacent stream channels, which would be a huge uh, permit violation. What size is the old generator? Two, 200 kilowatts. 200. Mm -hmm. For a generator to last that long, mm -hmm. I mean, maintenance, you know, the operator maintenance, PMCS, has to be done. I mean, that just seems like a very long time for a generator. So pretty impressive mm -hmm. for, again, the team taking care of equipment, having it last that long. Well, thank you. I mean, is that what you see as well? Yes. It's a lot of this type? Okay. We run, the, uh, we, uh, we, we run the generators about an hour each week on, on scheduled maintenance. Mm -hmm. we, we're very, very good about changing the oil, the coolants, and so forth. Yep. I think the, the crew takes uh, great pride in the, uh, the, uh, the long life of these generators across the board. And it shows. I mean, right. you're going to have equipment like this lasting that long. It shows. Right. So. And similar to what we have at uh, facilities, uh, utilities also has a full-time staff member um, running, going to every generator, testing it, maintaining it, changing the fluids, checking to make sure everything is operational, switches, et cetera. Um, so we, we're very diligent about making sure we're maintaining the equipment as long as possible. It's only when they age out, when we cannot no longer get replacement parts, 
is usually when we have to sit back and cut bait on that generator. But we try to we try to stretch its life to the longest possible yeah. end life. It's and good. Yeah, please. It's, it's good to know preventative maintenance is critical in saving us money with expensive replacements. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And as part of our tours for Commissioner mm -hmm. Rothstein next Tuesday and Commissioner Boucher on August 20th, we are going to show you the uh, generator at the Freedom Water Treatment Plant. That's going to, we, we have to start setting aside funding for, for that upgrade eventually as well. So. I'm holding my breath. You say, can I sign up? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Throw you in. Okay. No, we're selling tickets. <laughs> <laughs> to be with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Can I have a motion? No. Okay. I make a motion the Board of Commissioners award the contract for the purchase and installation of a replacement generator and automatic transfer switch for the Pleasant Valley Wastewater and Treatment Plant to Universal Utilities in the amount of $58,600. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. Now let's talk about a couple of John Deere tractors. And I apologize, Jim Cook would have been here to also talk about the generators. It was my oversight that the generators, or these, uh, I'm sorry, for these uh, tractors, just my oversight that this was for roads, so I, I will try to answer to any and all questions possible. Yep, so we're here to request for approval to purchase two John Deere 5075M utility tractors from uh, John Deere Incorporated Finch Services, the local dealer is going to be our delivering dealer. Um, so we're buying these off a of contract which was competitively bid, and the uh, amount of the purchase is going to be $168,300.50 for both tractors, and they do come with quite, quite a few accessories we can uh, elaborate on if you'd like. Right, these are used for our road mowing operations, so these will have side, side decks, rear deck mowers already attached to them, um, safety lights, etc. I mean, it's going to have multiple accessories and then used for outside of winter, or for winter activities, we have buckets and stuff that are that also get attached to the equipment. So it's fully outfitted out ahead of time? Yes. Just one question. Mm -hmm. When you purchase these on bid, is it the tractor and then each add-on bid, or is it a unit bid with everything? It's a, the base bid is for just the tractor, and then the accessories are all bid too, and they all have so different keep adding prices. On so it's kind of out of the card, you can add can on. Can you bid it yep. as one unit together? We could, yes. Um, as many times that's a cheaper option than See, what they do is the option and add on each item. They're kind of prohibited from bidding lower than the contract price, though. So our bid price would come out to the exact same as the contract price if we did bid it. We've tried that in the past. They just don't bid lower than the contract price that they've already got established. So we're not going to get any break by bidding it ourselves. Yeah, We've I mean, tried it in the past. And well, if anyone if what a John Deere, you're going to buy it off the contract. No. <laughs> They're going to bid them at this price no matter what right. yeah right I could buy them cheaper yes absolutely yes yeah. you can and we're not buying, you have, you know, you have we're putting one right. bid you right. as an individual have more flexibility right. than yeah than the and uh, that's unfortunate I, I just see that that's why I was asking if they're mm -hmm. add-on because they add on right. each individual piece right and the price goes up but it's, they're gonna make it come out for bid prices no matter what mm -hmm. it says it's replacing it's replacing two 2009 New Holland tractors where are those tractors going? Uh, we bump those into spares, and then we get we send current spares to auction. We we rotate them out. How often do these uh, go into auction? General depends on how many we replace a year. This year we're going to send two to auction. I don't anticipate buying any for the next two years, because the ones we have now are relatively new and they're in good shape. Is so. it just curious? Uh, since you say, is it a public auction? Is it a local public? Or is it so we do it online. online. It's, yeah. online. It's, yeah. it's available to anybody nationwide, but yeah. yes, it's, okay. it's online. We've had people come out from Colorado, pick stuff up that we sold. So does, it gets good. It gets no, I, I understand. Now, what about um, transferring some of this equipment maybe over to Parks and Rec, or that's not? Parks and Rec is actually, we maintain that through facilities or contracts. So this equipment is maintaining Parks and Rec? No, this equipment is actually for our roadways. First, the sides of our roadways for, right. um, you know, against guardrails right. or, you know, our slopes. So when we're, uh, you know, from basically these mowers are running straight on right. from April all the way till November, uh, we're mowing the side of the roadway. So that's what this is 
when there is something we have we could use in a different department mm -hmm. we do look at that sure um, generally once the roads department is done with these it's time to send them to auction I had to pass two of these tractors yesterday on my motorcycle and I like the fact that they don't discharge grass out into the roads it keeps it on the side as a motorcyclist that's really critical to me and this is the medium duty model I take it oh, this yes. is 75 horsepower yeah it's a two-wheel drive the E is the Econo model and there's another one that's outfitted with everything but okay <clears throat> Okay, with that, I move the Board of Commissioners award your contract for two John Deere uh, 5075M utility tractors to John Deere Care of Fence Services in the amount of $168,300 and 50 cents. Second. Okay, and this is in the budget, correct? This is yes. accounted for in budget. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Now let's talk about Procore Project Management Software. Thank you. Mr. Vogel, thanks for the tour of your facility this week. I was very much impressed with your staff maintaining all the equipment and the amount of assets this county has to maintain. It's a lot of hard work, so thank you. Thanks for coming out. Okay, finally, we're re requesting your approval to purchase the Procore project management software uh, from its parent company, EC America in the amount of $35,970.26. And this purchase we're making off the uh, federal GSA contract, which was competitive a bid. And we had a lot of discussion in this during the budget process. Yes. So if you can catch us up to what Procore is going to allow us to do. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Procore is a project management software that will enable staff from Public Works to manage multiple projects in one place with increased accountability, transparency, and collaboration both internally and externally. And what that means is it will, it will allow uh, not only staff from Public Works to utilize it, but all of our architects and engineers and our co uh, contractors and subcontractors as well will have access to this system. Uh, the PM soft software is designed to help streamline tedious tasks, centralize document management, control costs, enable forecasting, and automate complex workflows that allow project teams, again, both in, in the office and out in the field, to collaborate and manage overall project objectives. Uh, the project management software will also allow for a central storage location of data that can be utilized to generate project specific reports and compare historical and current costs during change order analysis, as well as uh, provide histor historical data uh, to assist in the completion of the CIP process. I'm looking forward to hearing the analytics as time moves on, the return on investment for this type of software, as we're challenged to meet budget, you know, meet needs with uh, this past year's budget, and the intent here is this will allow for more efficiencies. So that yes. return on investment over, whether it's six months or a year, coming back saying this is what this software did and allowed us to do, I think is um, is very important and you know should be an accountability of the value. That we're putting into this so definitely and we're currently okay. using the same program uh with uh with the freedom wastewater treatment plant upgrade and also with the hampstead wastewater treatment plant upgrade this program uh, is in place uh, and it's it has proven um, itself time and time again as a as a central location for all parties working on the project to be able to track funds track change orders it expedites um, any request for information keeps everybody accountable and has timelines and alerts uh, so no time goes by keeps the project mo moving uh, and definitely reduces delays and over cost overruns for projects so it's what do been you predict is the timeline on return on investment on this just your thoughts this is this is going to pay I mean you you perform some in initial analysis of some of the projects that we had currently going w within six months of a project getting off the ground we see this already turning you know saving the time savings with all the staff members because uh, we're doing everything right now in multiple spreadsheets we're using administrative staff uh, tracking items we're having to um, rely on management budget we're relying on accounting to be tracking some of the some items that go on with these projects uh, this will this will have it all in one place the minute it comes in it's entered everything submitted through this pro this program 
Uh, so all the data is there real time, so you know exactly where you are budget-wise, you know exactly where you are with uh, submittals. From a business perspective, this is tremendous as all saved this county a lot of money. Also, I'd like to give recognition to Commissioner Rothstein for being a strong advocate of this during the budgetary process. Right. Thank you so, so much. This is, yes. So he championed this for you guys, so thank you. Okay. With that said, do I hear a motion? I think the guy who was a strong advocate for it should probably make the motion. I think Commissioner Rothstein. <laughs> okay, I move that the Board of Commissioners <laughs> award the contract for the purchase of the Procore project management software package to. Who is it? C America? E C America. Inc. in the amount of $35,970.26. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, that whole bunch took the E out. Yeah, <laughs> See you in six yeah. months. You got it. Not a problem. In, 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 in opportunity, place whole bunch. <laughs> so seeing no public for public comment, uh, open for administrative. Uh, Comments? Does anybody have? Uh, yeah. A member of our General Assembly delegation brought to my attention that next year during the census we'll have to do the redistricting for county districts. I was wondering what's the format of that legally and what's your time frame? I've when do we prepare for that? We'll, we'll pro provide you with information. Okay, if it gets I've closer. Asked, I've already asked the county attorney. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, there's a very specific code provision that I can send to all of you that lays it out nicely. That'd be, okay. that'd be fantastic. Get a fact sheet on yeah. that. Okay. I don't think it's next year. I think you have to do it by or year after. Yeah. Okay. By, the, yeah. by the election in 2022. Because you won't even right. have the census information until 2022. So that's way out there. Yeah. I don't even have to worry about it. But no, it's good to prepare. No, no, it's, it's good it's to know. But we got to get something in line. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Right. Yeah, government don't move that fast anyway. <laughs> we won't even have the census information until 2021. So. Any other administrative comments? signing stuff in. Okay, sign stuff in a minute. Yeah. Hearing none, let's go into agendas. <clears throat> so for next week, I have a uh, government workforce development meeting that I'll be attending in Lithicum on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Commissioner Weaver will be walking with his community, uh, walk with the commissioner in Finksburg at Sandy Mountain Park at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. On Thursday, we have closed session, and then we have open session starting at 10 o'clock with a handful of items. First is uh, public comment, on, okay, excuse me, charter procedure overview, uh, Board of County Commissioners, a bid approval, Bear, Na Bear Branch Nature Center roof placement, resolution declaring counties Official intent to reimburse expenditures with debt pro proceeds. Loan request for Hampstead Volunteer Fire Department and adoption of resolution declaring intent to reimburse expenditures with debt proceeds. CY 2020 Health and Dental Insurance Employee Rates. We are going to have discussion on, excuse me, request approval to develop application and hold a public hearing FY20 Community Development Block Grant Homeless Round Family Support Center, Family and Children's Services. We have request approval for BGE estimated cost for utilities uh, relocation in Hollingsworth Road Bridge over unnamed stream. <laughs> and then we're going to have a grant application approval, or request for approval, FY 2020 Burn Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. And we will have open session <coughs> uh, in the afternoon at 1 p.m. with, uh, let's see, public hearing, purchasing bid protest, Department of County Attorney. Right? Yeah. Where'd you go? Okay. And then at 4 p.m., uh, Teacup Cafe remodel grand opening with Commissioner Boucher and Commissioner Frazier attending. Be there too. And Commissioner Weaver attending. At 7 p.m., uh, I will be walking with the community over in Freedom Park at 7 p yeah at 7 p.m. on Thursday. Friday, reminder: County offices will be closing at 3 p.m. on Saturday. There's an Eagle Scout uh, recognition that I will be attending down in Sykesville. On Sunday, I'll have the uh, commissioner's report, and then also 
There's a 4-H FFA fair. Uh, recommend all attending in our community. Uh, car show judging, Commissioner Weaver and Boucher will be two of the judges. There might be cars that are older than us. That's a very well, difficult one Older judge. than you. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, the following week on the 29th, uh, attending the 4-H breakfast, it'll be Commissioner Wance and Rothstein right now. I'll be there. Put my name down for that. Okay. Expect uh, four or five of us attending that breakfast. Um, I have a planning and zoning commission work session at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have closed session at 9 a.m. and then at 10 a.m. open session, which is Thursday, August 1st. Uh, CY 2020 health and dental insurance employee rates. Public comment on that discussion that we had the week before. Bid approval access control phase two. Bid approval 2019, John Deere uh, wheel loaders. Bid approval three Ford Fusion S models. More bid approvals, uh, 2019 Chevrolet Equinox SUVs. Bid approval, restoration of Quail Meadows, <coughs> excuse me, pathway. We have a request approval for submission and award acceptance senior Medicare patrol grant application 2019-2020. And then Friday, we have nothing. Saturday, there will be a Eagle Scout recognition with Commissioner Weaver uh, in attendance in Hampstead. On Sunday, Commissioner Wentz has the weekly report and Commissioner Boucher will be attending the Dream Big Union Bridge Community Cookout up in Union Bridge. Okay. With that said, we do not have an afternoon session. Do I have a motion to recess? Aye. All in favor? Aye. To adjourn, right? To adjourn. I apologize. Not recess. I'm sorry. To